Hello again. Today we're going to tie this damsel nymph. Um, this is uh, obviously so she's got the yellow bead chain eyes. It's got a pheasant tail back to it. Gold ribbed, gold flash. Um, there's a partridge feather for the legs, an ostrich tail for the body. Um, it's not too difficult to tie at all, in fact. Um, and it fishes really well. I use this quite a lot, this fly, actually. So, in the vise, I'm going to put a size 12 Kamazam B800, which is like a, an extra long shanked hook. Thread is uni thread, 6.0 in olive. And we're going to start a little ways behind the eye, maybe two eye lengths. And in nice, neat, touching turns, we're going to come back to where the barb is. Um, now we're going to add the tail, which is just olive marabou, plain old olive marabou. So we're going to take a nice, a nice good couple of pinches of this. Oops, if I can without dropping it everywhere. Um, and as normal with marabou, we're just going to trim all the skin bits off that come off the stalk and then whoops and then take away some of the take away some of the fluff so let's try and neaten that up a little bit it's just misbehaving a little bit sometimes marabou does sometimes it's better just to start again so we're going to grab another pinch off the feather it kind of slipped out my hand a little bit and then all went a bit peak dong so Sometimes you just, with these materials, they can be fickle sometimes, they can play up. You just gotta be patient with them. Um, to be honest with you, Marabou doesn't, doesn't normally misbehave, but typically, because I'm doing a video, it's gonna misbehave on me. So I'm gonna tie that in on the shank um tail length on this fly just a bit longer than the actual shank of the hook um get it tied in there so flash crystal crystal flash in gold uh but in all honesty you can use any flash you like um I just like that combination of, of olive and gold. And we're going to tie, whoops, we're going to tie it in on my side. Now crystal flash like this is, is all twisted up, which is why you get that crystal effect. So it can be a bit springy as you can see. Just going to tie that in and we're going to trim full length of the tail with the crystal flash. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now we're going to tie in a gold wire this is like a medium gold wire I'm just going to put a bit of going to put a bit of wax on the thread here I'm just going to come back to the base of the tail I'm going to catch in a gold wire full length of the body with a couple of turns and then I'm going to catch in some pheasant tail fiber again oh come out let's just sort that out let's get that wire out of the way Coming up, I'm crash that wire on. I'd be pheasant tail in my mouth there, which is why I sounded weird. We're going to catch the pheasant tail and the wire in on top of the shank at the same time and wrap it right up. And then I'm going to come back halfway. Don't worry if it all looks a complete mess um, for the minute. Don't worry about that. Just make sure the pheasant tail is on the top, like that, and the wire is tied in. Don't worry about anything else because it will sort itself out. Now we're going to take some ori orange, olive, um, it's not even close to orange, is it? Uh, peacock cow. And I'm just going to take a couple of strands. Oh, come here. Just going to take a couple of strands off 
and I'm going to tie them in. I'm just going to even up the tips, whoops, and I'm going to tie them in going back. And when I get back to the base of the towel, I guarantee it's on the top. Whoops, and there we go. Now I'm going to run my thread up to about there. Um, the ostrich tail is going to come towards me as I wrap. Okay, I'm just going to wrap this up the body to about there. I'm just going to try and a little bit thicker there, that's fine. And then we're going to tie that off. Again, when, when we wrap things towards, we do, we can get this out of the way, a turn, if I can, there we go. We do a turn over the material and a turn on the hook. And I do that three times. That's properly tied in. Okay. Now, I'm just going to wet my fingers and I'm going to brush it down like this. And I'm going to bring the pheasant tail over. I'm just going to come over with one turn, pull it nice and tight, come over with another turn. You can see that's lovely now. Okay. Do a third turn, pull it back, catch it. Make sure it's all properly caught. And now with my wire, I'm just going to come through as I would normally, catching the pheasant tail and the ostrich hurl and everything all in one. Now we're going to catch the wire. Come over two or three times, pull everything back and make sure it's all caught. Whoops, just drop the wire there. And then, as usual with wire, I'm just going to wiggle it. Sorry if my hands are in the way here. Just going to wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, till it breaks off. And now we're going to catch that pheasant tail back. Let's pin it back there. Okay, now we're going to come to the front. And we're going to put the eyes on now. So these are just 3.2 millimetre uh, B chain eyes. Whoops, come here. They're painted and they are from Kindale Flies. Um, I bought a few of their products and I'm quite happy with them actually. So I'm going to come over, catching it on with a few turns here and there, spin it round to the bottom because obviously whichever side your B chain eyes are, that's the side that's going to face down. So we're going to come around with a few turns. And then I'm going to do a few turns under the eyes, over the hook shank. And that's those tied in. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of varnish in between them. Now, some people say you shouldn't do this because it can make it brittle and they can, you know, if you hit something while casting, they can snap off. Or if you hit a rock or something like that, they can snap off. Now... My answer to that is don't hit a rock, don't hit any trees or anything, but I can honestly say I've always glued or varnished my dumbbell eyes and hand on heart, I have never had them fall off. So I'll carry on doing it this way. But as with everything, um, as with everything to do with tying flies, you need to um, do it the way you want to do it. Now, as you can see on this fly, we've got this uh, partridge feather for legs. So that's what we're going to tie in next. Now, this is just a normal partridge, English partridge feather. I'm going to take away all the fluffy bits. Okay, whoops, go away fluffy bits. There we go. And I'm going to pinch the feather there and I'm going to pull everything back. And that's created a little triangle and that's what I'm going to use to tie everything in. So with the good side of the feather, you can see it's curved. So with the convex side of the feather facing myself and the concave side facing you, I'm going to tie that little triangle bit in nice and tight. I'm going to come up, come in with my scissors. Sorry if my hands are in the way here. In with the scissors. Just gonna make sure I've got wax on the thread here. We pull everything, whoops, pull everything back and make sure it's really tied in well. And then sweep everything back. 
and then just I pretty much use the feather up to be honest with you um, but in truth you probably only need a couple of turns let's come back a minute give me a let's just fight me a little bit you got to be um that's better you've got to be quite um delicate and steady with these feathers they won't they won't take a lot of abuse um so i'm just going to come around using that feather up catch it one two three right pull everything back push everything back mind your fingers on the hook point and just make sure that's tied in and then come in with your scissors and i'm going to swap scissors here so i've got me really really sharp ones bring that stalk out minding them legs come in get rid of it okay come around and just just have a look bring this thorax cover and the back of the fly over and just have a, have a look how everything's going to be now if you think you've got too much which to be honest with you i do i'm just going to come in take some of them away and that that'll do then we'll sweep that back and then go and then go back to an ostrich hole so i'm just going to take a single ostrich hole off this time snip the end you don't need much it's just to neaten everything up really we're going to catch this on sweep it back so it can't come undone and then we're going to come round building up in front of where we tied in the English partridge now I'm going to do a few kind of wraps under the um, bee chain eyes we're going to come in front of the bee chain eyes that's where we're going to catch it off we're back come in snip it off right now you're going to bring your um, pheasant tail over the top splitting that partridge feather sweep everything back what I do is I take my left hand I sweep everything back and I hold it there with the index finger of my left hand and I come around with a few two few a couple of loose turns sorry pull everything tight and that's where we were keep everything tight do a few wraps pull the pheasant back come in snip just going to put a bit of wax on the thread I'm going to hold the hook and I'm just going to try and neaten this up a little bit there we go and as usual with these flies all I'm going to do is come in and I'm going to varnish the thread but we will be varnishing the back of this fly off I'll show you what I mean in a moment if I can get my whip finish tool out seems to be trapped come in for the whip finish nice and neat one two three four is plenty come down tighten it up come in snip now a little bit long those legs a little bit long but do you know what i'm never that fussy with this fly um Again, this is one of those flies that seems to fish better once it's caught a couple of fish. Um, now we're just going to varnish the top of the whip, the head, and I'm going to put a bit all the way down the back on top of that pheasant tail. Now it does two things. It helps to give a little bit of a shine on the thorax cover and the back of the fly, and it just strengthens it. And And that basically is it. Like I said, it seems to do better this fly once it's caught a couple of fish and it's gone a bit scruffy and a bit battered but once again thanks for watching um give this one a go because it is um it is a good fish catcher um please like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you on the next one thank you